Matilda, Chapter 9, The Parents When Miss Honey emerged from the headmistress's study, most of the children were outside in the playground. Her first move was to go around to the various teachers who taught in the senior class and borrow them a number of textbooks, books on algebra, geometry, French Eng and English literature and the like. Then she sought out Matilda and called her into her classroom. There's no point, she said, in you sitting in the class doing nothing while I am teaching the rest of the form the two times tables and how to spell cat and rat and mouse. So during each lesson I shall give you one of the textbooks to study and at the end of the lesson you shall come up to me with your questions if you have any and I shall try to help you. How does that sound? Thank you, Miss Honey, Matilda said. That sounds fine. I am sure, I said, that we will be able to get you moved into a much higher form later on. But for the moment, the headmistress wishes, wishes you to stay where, where you are. Very well, Miss Honey, Matilda said. Thank you so much for getting those books for me. What a nice child she is, Miss Honey thought. I don't care what her father says about her. She seems very quiet and gentle to me, not a bit stuck up in spite of her brilliance. In fact, she hardly seems aware of it. So when the class reassembled, Miss Hilda went to her desk and began to study a textbook on geometry, which Miss Honey had given her. The teacher kept half an eye on her all the time and noticed that the child very soon became deeply absorbed in the book. She never glanced up, up once during the entire lesson. Miss Honey, meanwhile, was making herself another decision. A secret talk with Matilda's mother and father as soon as possible. She simply refused to let the matter rest where it was. The whole thing was ridiculous. She couldn't believe the parents were totally unaware of their daughter's remarkable talents. After all, Mr Wormwood was a successful motor car dealer, so she presumed that he was he was a fairly intelligent man himself. In any event, parents never underestimated the abilities of their own children. Quite the reverse. Sometimes it was well nigh impossible for a teacher to convince the proud father or mother that their beloved offspring was a complete nitwit. Miss Honey felt confident that she had no difficulty in, in convincing Mr and Mrs Wormwood that Matilda was something very special indeed. The trouble was, Matilda. Matilda was something very special indeed. The trouble was going to be stop them from getting over enthusiastic. And now Miss Honey hopes began to expand even further. She started wondering whether permission might not be sought from the parents to give private tuition to Matilda after school. The prospect of coaching a child as bright as a bright assistant appealed enormously to her professional instinct as a teacher, and suddenly she decided that she would go and call on Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood that very evening. She would go fairly late, between nine and ten o'clock, when Matilda was sure to be in bed. And that is precisely what she did. Ha having got the address from the school records, Miss Honey set out to walk from her own home to the Wormwood's house. Shortly after nine, she found she found the house in a pleasant street where each smallish building was separated from its neighbours by a bit of garden. It was a modern brick house that could not have been cheap to buy at the gate of Nosy, Nosy, Nosy Nook. Nosy Cook might have been a bit better. Miss Honey thought she was given to playing with the words that way. She walked the path and rang the bell. And while she stood waiting, she could hear the te television blaring inside. The door was opened by a small ratty looking man with a thin ratty moustache. He was wearing a sports coat and an orange red stripe of material. Yes, he said, peering at Miss Honey. If you're selling raffle tickets, I don't want any. But I'm not, Miss Honey said. And please forgive me for butting on in on you like this but i'm matilda's teacher at school it is important that i have a word with your wife got trouble already has she 
as the worm had said, blocking the doorway. Well, she's your responsibility from now on. You're going to have to deal with her. There's no trouble at all, Miss Huntington. I've come with good news about her. Quite startling news, Mr. Wormwood. Do you think I might have to come in for a few minutes to talk about Matilda? We are right in the middle of watching one of our favourite programmes, Mr. Wormwood said. This is our most inconvenient. Why didn't you come back for some other time? Mr. Miss Honey began to lose her patience. Mr. Wormwood, she said. I think some rotten TV programme is more important than your daughter's future. Then you ought not to be a parent. Why don't you switch the darn thing off and listen to me? That shot Mr. Wormwood. He was not used to being spoken in this way. He peered carefully at the slim, frail woman who stood resolutionally at the porch. Oh, very well then, he snapped. Come in and let's get over with. Let, let it get over with. Miss Honey stepped in briskly inside. Miss Wormwood isn't going to thank you for this, the man said as he led her into the sitting room, where a large platinum bomb blonde woman was gazing rapturously at the, at the TV screen. Who is it? The woman said, not looking around. Some school teacher, Mr. Wormwood said. She says that she's got to talk to us about Matilda. He crossed, he crossed to the TV set and turned down the sound but left the picture on the screen. Don't do that, Harry! Miss Wormwood cried out. Well, I was just about to propose to Angelica. You can still watch it while, you're, while we're talking, Mr. Wormwood said. This is Matilda's teacher. She says that she's got some sort of news to give us. My name is Jennifer Honey, Miss Honey said. How do you do, Mr. Mrs. Wormwood? Miss Wormwood glared at her and then said, What's your trouble then? Nobody invited Miss Honey to sit down, so she chose the chair and sat down anyway. This, she said, was your daughter's first day at school. We know that, Mr. Mrs. Wormwood said, ratty about missing her program. This is, is that all you came to tell us? Miss Honey stared hard at the other woman's wet grey eyes and allowed her silence to hang in the air until Mrs. Wormwood became uncomfortable. Do you wish to explain why I came? she said. Get on with it then, Mrs. Wormwood said. I'm sure you know, Miss Honey said, that children in the bottom class of school are not expected to be able to read, spell or juggle with numbers when they first arrive. Five-year-olds cannot do that, but Matilda can do it all. And, uh, and if I am to believe her... I wouldn't, the swimmer said. She was still a little ratty. She was still ratty about losing the sound on the TV. Well, she's lying then, the sunny said. When she told me that nobody taught her to read to multiply or to read. So nobody taught her to multiply or to read. Did he do teach her that? T teach her what? Mr. Wormwood said. To read, to read books, Miss Honey said. Perhaps you did teach her. Perhaps she was lying. Perhaps you had shelves full of books all over the house. I wouldn't know. Perhaps you are both great readers. Of course we read, Mr. Wormwood said. Don't be so daft. I read the auto car and the motor from cover to cover every single week. This child has already read from an astonishing number of books, Miss Honey said. I was simply trying to find out if she came from a family that loved good literature. We don't hold in book reading, Mr. Wormwood said. Can't make a living from sitting on your family and reading storybooks. We don't keep them in the house. I see. Miss Honey said. Well, all I came to, to tell you is that Matilda has a brilliant eye. By, by spec, you already knew that. Of course I knew. Of course I knew she could read. Her mother said. She spends her life up in, the, up in her room, buried in some silly old book. But does it not intrigue you? Miss Honey said. 
that a little five-year-old child is reading long adult novels from, Dif from Dickens and Hemingway. Doesn't that make you jump up and down with excitement? Not particularly, her mother said. I'm not in favour of blue stocking girls and a girl that sh should, should think about making herself look attractive so that she can... So that she can get a good husband later on. Look, are more important than books, Miss Hunky. The name is Honey, she said. Now you look at me, said Mrs. Wormwood. Then look at you. I choose, you chose books, I chose looks. Miss Honey looked at a plain, plump person with a smug, sweet pudding face who was sitting across the room. What did you say? I said, you chose books and I chose looks. Miss Wilma said. And who's finishing up the better off? Me, of course. I'm sitting pretty in a nice house with, with a successful businessman. And you're less slaving away, teaching quite a lot of the nasty little children with the ABC. Quite right, sure, Blum, Mr. Wormwood said, casting a look at such simply soppy looks at his wife that it would have made it would have made a cat sick. Miss Honey decided that if she was going to if she was going to get anywhere with these people, she must not lose her temper. I haven't told all of it yet, she said. Matilda. So far as I can gather, it is early stage as a kind of mathematical genius. She can multiply complicated figures in her head like lightning. What's the point of that when you can buy a calculator? Mr. Wormwood said. A girl, a girl doesn't need a man by being brainy, Mr. Wormwood said. Look at the film star, for instance, she added, pointing at the silent TV where a bosmosy female was embraced by a craggy actor in the moonlight. You don't think she got him to do that by multiplying fingers at him, do you? Not likely. And now she's going to marry her. You see? You see if he doesn't. He's going to live in a mansion with a butler and lots of maids. Miss Honey could hardly believe what she was hearing. She heard parents like this existed all over the place, and the children turned out to be deli delinquent and dropouts. But this was still a shock to meet a pair of them in the flesh. Matilda's trouble, she said, trying once again, is that she is so far ahead of everyone else and that it might be worth thinking of some extra kind of private tuition. I seriously believe that she could be brought up to university standing in two or three years with proper, proper coaching. University? Mr. Wormwood shouted, bouncing up and shared. Who wants to go to university, for heaven's sake? All they learn there is bad habits. That is not true, Miss Honey said. If you had a heart attack in this minute, you would have to call a doctor, and the doctor would be a university graduate. If you got sued for selling something in a car, you'd have, you, you'd have to go to a lawyer. And he'd be a university graduate, too. Do not despise clever people, Mr. Wormwood. But I can see we are not going to agree. I'm sorry I burst in on you like this. Sonny rose from the chair and walked out the room. Mr. Wormwood followed her to the front door and said, Good of you to come, Miss Hawkes. Or is it Miss Harris? It's neither, Miss Sonny said. But let it go. And away she went.